Hi guys, thank you for joining me for this new drawing tutorial and this one I guess is quite a narrated one because when I uploaded the photo of this drawing on Instagram I had quite some comments and likes and people went crazy. <laughs> so I hope you will like the video as well. And before we start a huge huge thank you and shout out to T-Jot Models who is the photographer of this beautiful photo and also to Stroid, which is the beautiful model of this beautiful photo. And I will link both of their Instagram IDs here in the video and in the video description, as well as the YouTube video link for T-Jot models down as well. So please have a look at them, follow them, give them some love. It is really an amazing photo to work from. What I especially loved in this photo is the contrast that it has. So these really harsh darks and the highlights. This is something I really like watching because it just pops into your into your eyes. So you are catched immediately by these dark shadings and the strong highlights which this photograph has. And, and he also has a stunning face to just want to look at it. And this was something I wanted to recreate in my drawing and I hope I succeeded. Please let me know in the comments if you think I succeeded or if you think I should have done something differently or better or if you see anything that you might have made differently than I did. So let me know, we'll be happy to hear your comments. If you like it as it is and you just fell in love with it, let me know as well. So nice comments, also quite nice to read. So the drawing itself was done again on my Bristol 300 vellum series paper. It is about 50 by 60 centimeters in size and I taped it again to an MDF board just to have it made on a stiff surface. As you can see on my desk it is quite messy again as it is usual is on this angle when I film like this and you can see all the materials that I'm using which is again my sketch and peel charcoal pencils, some brushes to brush the pigment into the paper, my sandpaper pad where I just create some charcoal dust to use for my painting, some blending stumps, some erasers which is mostly my mono zero eraser and this yeah, this is this blue thingy here, which you can see is just another a big larger eraser. So nothing fancy, nothing really special. The stuff that I usually use. And when I sketched the outlines on the paper, I just started shading. And this is something which I already explained in many other videos, like in the Fabian video or the Bruno video or the... What else did I do? The Mark and Ethan video. Yeah, so many videos before where I explained and showed my techniques. So if you like to see this in more detail again, head over to these videos and have a look. I do not want to bore you in this video and explain my whole technique again. So just the basics that I'm going for the very darks in the first place to have my reference value on the paper, which is normally the darkest tones just to see where my shading is going to end up. And to get as dark as I need in my technique, I need to have several layers of charcoal, especially in the very dark areas. So I use quite some amount of charcoal, add it to the hairs at first and blend it around and try to get rid of all the white dots on the paper, have an even coverage and then layering up until I have the darkness that I want to have. To building the strands, I just erase some of the charcoal array to get the highlights and so on and so on and so on. So I think the hair itself have about four layers of charcoal added and highlights erased out of the charcoal. In between, I think after the third layer, I spray fixed it with the Jexcel fixative, which you can see on the lower left corner of the picture here. Um, this is, I think, my most preferred fixative because it works quite well for charcoal and also quite well for pastels, which normally does not work for pastels, but this one really does work for it. And yeah, so I was building up the contrast. I also added some charcoal powder on the darkest areas on the face when I was halfway done with the hair so just to give the reference values and you yeah, had to have somewhat progress in the picture itself. And normally I change the shadings by layering. So I do not really add the complete amount of total darkness charcoal on the first layer because this is not really possible in technique that I'm working on. And once you have really, really darkest charcoal on the paper that you can have there and you need to go lighter, it is always a bit of a pain to erase that much of charcoal. So it is always easier for me, especially when you go in layers and you can erase and erase and erase. So just to give some highlights. 
Also a very important part is having your reference photo close by. And as you can see in my video here, I have my reference photo always next to my drawing itself so that I can see if my proportions are still correct, if the angle is still correct, if the shading itself is correct and so on and so on. And when it comes to hairs, you might see it on a reference photo and the drawing that I'm doing here. I do not really take that much care that every hair strand itself looks like it is on a reference photo, because this is nothing really important, in my opinion. It still looks like a haircut and it looks like hairs. And this, in the end, is the most important thing to pay attention to. So that it looks like hairs and that it looks like a natural haircut. If it really looks completely like a reference photo, this is, in my opinion, not important because once you go with your hand through your hairs, it looks completely different. So just something I really don't care so much for. But not to bore you too much with my uh, technique explanation this time, as you can see the other videos which I told you before, I want to tell something about why I do these model drawings every now and then. And the reason is, so as you might have seen in other videos, I am trying to become a full-time artist. So drawing as much as I can, being out there as much as I can. But as you can see on my Instagram and my YouTube, I am still very, very tiny. So at this point today, I have about 150 followers on YouTube and about not even close to 700 on Instagram, which is not much. Yeah, you agree, this is not much. So I really do not have that much of a range to be out there compared to many, many other art accounts. And to grow my audience and to have something to draw from, I oftentimes, yeah, look through other Instagram accounts, especially the ones that follow me or that I come across. And when I see a picture that I really love and would love to, to draw or to paint, I ask the ones. And this is basically the reason why I end up drawing so many model photos. Because, just because, model photos are made by a professional photographer, have the perfect lighting, have nice models, and yeah, it is just way, way easier to work from these photos than you can work from uh, in front of a mirror selfie that was taken by someone on his Instagram profile. This is basically the reason why I love working from model photos. But if you plan to do this for yourself, there is one important thing that you must keep in mind before starting. Ask the photographer for permission. This is really essential. Basically, even if you find the photo on the model's page, you can of course ask the model. But even if the model gives you permission to use the photograph, you always need to ask the photographer as well. Because the photographer is the one who holds the copyright. And it is also easier and better and safer for you if we have the okay from the photographer. And from my experience so far, I never had any of them declining me working from the photos. Or if there was a reason why I could not use the photo that I wanted to use, they told me why. And so it was okay. And even if there is no reason and they just do not want you to use it, you have to accept it and that's the answer that you get and this is okay as well. But just imagine you just take the picture from the photographer, draw or paint it and then post it on your Instagram and there's whatsoever reason this was denied from the photographer or he doesn't even know and perhaps it was not okay to use this photo for whatever reason and so you can run into legal issues which no one really wants to face. As there are many, many photographers out there which are really, really, really lovely persons, just ask them, write them a message on Instagram or wherever you find a reference photo and just ask them for permission. Many of them will be flattered, of course, if you want to draw from their photos. And if you give them credit in your drawing, it is even better for both sides. Because photographers are as the same kind of artist as you do. Yes, they do photography and you do drawing or painting, but they are also artists. They want to have credit for their work. And this is something we, especially as an artist, should honor as well. Because if you make an awesome original painting or drawing, put it out there to the public and anyone just copies it and claims it to be their own work, you wouldn't be happy as well. So why not give them proper credit to make it easier for all of us? So keep in mind, if you come across a photo that you would like to use and you have the slightest feeling that this one might have not been self-made by the one that is on the photo, 
asked the one on the photo if this was a self-made photo, if he has the copyright or if the photo was taken by anyone else. And if it was taken by anyone else, try to get the contact details and ask this one for permission. This will make your life way, way easier and you do not run any copyright or legal issues afterwards. This would be a bad thing for everyone. And here again a big thank you for t-shirt models that he allowed me to use this photo and another photo from Stroid, which I'm going to paint or which I'm currently painting and you will see the video in a couple of well, let's say weeks, because I have so many videos to upload before, so it will come in a couple of weeks. And he also allowed me to use the three Fabian pictures that I drew and painted. So many, many things. Please have a look and give his Instagram and his YouTube channel a like and a subscription. And yeah. And another important thing, of course, if you use a reference photo of which you do not have the copyright or which was not royalty free to use, so like this photo of... Uh, destroyed here, you will not be able to sell it. So even if you use this photograph of him and make a completely different background and change things and whatsoever, you still are not the copyright owner and you will not be allowed to sell it unless the photographer of course um, allows you to. So keep this in mind, even if you made the creation of the drawing, the copyright itself is still with the owner of the photograph. Yeah, so you cannot recreate an artwork and then sell it as your work. So this will not be possible. This is the reason why I use these photos for reference, for painting and drawing to improve my skills. And then once I'm hopefully satisfied with it, I will be very, very happy to ship them to the original models or the photographer, <laughs> whoever wants to have it. Normally I will send them to the models. So I was sending the three drawings paintings to Fabian and I will also send this drawing and the upcoming painting to Patrick, which is his real name. So Stroid is his ID in Instagram. And so actually everyone is a winner. The model itself gets some new artwork. You have something to show to the public. You can give the photographer credits and therefore he or she may get some more notice as well on the internet from other people that normally do follow art accounts and not photographer accounts or model accounts. So it's a win-win scenario for each and everyone. So returning back to the drawing. As you might have wondered already that I'm using my fingers this time all the time and normally I tell you don't use your fingers because they are greasy and they are wet and they can ruin your drawing. Yeah, this time I really decided to make the Actually, the major part of this drawing is done by my fingers. <laughs> so I did not use a blending stump or such that much. I used my fingers to blend around. And this is something you can do on larger charcoal works, like this is one. Because normally when going that large and especially that dark and you use much, much charcoal powder, you have enough darkness on the picture that you have your complete fingers covered in charcoal. And this is something quite similar to pastels. So if you have your finger covered in charcoal, you don't risk smudging some grease from your skin around on your drawing. Make sure before you touch the paper that you press your finger into the charcoal powder to make it in completely covered with it. And then you can smudge the charcoal around on the paper with your fingers without having any risks to face. For really small details, of course, I use the blending stump and my charcoal pencil and all the materials that you can see me use here in the video. But for the larger areas and for the bigger part, I found it much, much easier blending with my fingers than any other tools that I have laying around here. And of course, this is something you can totally do. You can do this on your own and experiment with it. Just make sure that you do not touch the paper unless you are covered in charcoal on your fingers. So if you forget it and you do have some greasy fingers and push your fingers on your artwork, you might end up having fingerprints on it. And this is something you really do not want to have because once you have a fingerprint on it, the charcoal itself will stick to this part differently than it does on the rest of the paper. And this is also something you will have a hard time to correct or to, to fix. So just before you touch the paper, make sure your hands are clean or if not clean, in this case, covered with charcoal powder to do not face anything that you do not want to have on your paper. 
And this basically should sum up everything that I want to tell you for today, for this drawing. I hope again you liked it, I hope you find my tips useful and want to do something similar on your own. If you do, as usual, let me know, tag me on Instagram or send me a message on Facebook and show me your artwork. I am always happy to see what you are creating or if you have any questions for this piece or for my techniques or whatever you want to know, leave me a comment wherever you want and and subscribe to my channel if you have not already, it will mean the world for me. You can also use the bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos, which will be about two or three a week normally. And yeah, I hope this was of any help for you and I look forward to see you in my next videos. Have a great day! <laughs> bye bye!